join the call. Do. Uh, continue. So can you all see my presentation? Yes. Yep. Brilliant. Um, I suddenly got a bit nervous when I joined the meeting because um, there are lots of familiar faces and um, familiar names on the call. So I think a lot of you know a lot more about Buckinghamshire Archives than I do and have been using it for a lot longer than I have. But um, I'll crack on. And if I make any mistakes, I'm sure I'm sure you'll you'll let me know. Um, so the, my talk today is going to kind of fall into three pieces. So I've got some slides uh, to kind of set the context of who the what the archives is, where it's come from, um, and who works there. Um, so you get an idea of how we work, what our aims are. Um, I've got a bit of a show and tell uh, of some documents, uh, both in the presentation, and I've got a few things here with me. Um, and then I was going to whiz you through our website, um, the different resources that we have available to use on there, some of which might be useful for knowing your place. Um, but uh, as you'll see, my first slide is called Getting to Know Buckinghamshire Archives. Um, I should probably just tell you a little bit about myself first. Um, I've worked here for five years and I'm still the newbie, um, which says a lot about my colleagues. Uh, I started off uh, as uh, an archaeology undergrad um, and uh, worked for the civil service in London for a few years and retrained as an archivist after, getting, after working with uh, several archivists, I thought. That's a good gig. Um, so when the opportunity arose, I studied archives and records management at, as a master's, which is a qualification that a lot of us working in the sector share. Um, so I'm not a historian. Um, and if anything, I probably bludgeon history to uh, serve my own ends here um, and I'm at the ends of Buckinghamshire Archives. So do forgive me. Um, Okay, so a little bit about Buckinghamshire Archives. That's our entrance uh, with our lovely new name that we've had for nearly a year now. Uh, many of you might have might remember that we've been called Centre for Buckinghamshire Studies for ooh, probably about 20 years uh, up until last year. Um, we had a, a change of name as we thought it, uh, we had all grown a bit weary of explaining what the Centre for Buckinghamshire Studies does. Uh, Buckinghamshire Archives or Bucks Archives as we call ourselves. Um, it's a bit more on the, the name, we do what we say on the tin really. Um, and the next slide, the next image here is uh, a photo of County Hall or Walton Street offices as it is now, um, just after it was built. Um, now, at this point, Buckinghamshire Archives or the service that became Buckinghamshire Archives had existed for my maths is terrible, but again, about 20 years. We started in 1938 um, over the road in the uh, Market Square in the Quarter Sessions buildings there. Um, I don't know if any of you know Aylesbury, um, but we were pretty much in the basement by the arch, uh, just close to the judges' lodgings. That's where they stored the uh, records initially. Um, by the time they decided to build these offices, um, they had, uh, our service was quite established and they decided to build us some strong rooms in the basement and archives are always in the basement because we're heavy um, and we will quickly be in the basement uh, if we were put elsewhere. So we have six rooms at the moment to store records in, in this space. Um, and if you can see where my mouse is, I'm hovering over some windows. That's more or less where I'm sat this morning um, in Buckinghamshire Archives. So we're purpose built and we started in 1938. Um, the question is why? Um, and that's quite a, a, knotty, a knotty question really. Um, there was a bit of legislation passed in 1936, which essentially uh, mandated all local authorities or county authorities to uh, look after their own records and the records they inherited and the records they create going forwards. Um, and that established uh, the mandate for creating a county record office. Uh, the first one was Bedfordshire. Uh, Buckinghamshire was quite quick um, setting it, us up. I think we're number four or number six in the country. Uh, some were set up not until many years later. So we're part of a network of, of county archives. Um, and what we collect over the years has, has morphed and changed. We still have a legal mandate to collect the council's uh, records uh, and look after those and make those accessible. 
Um, but our collecting policy today is uh, fourfold. We collect anything to do with the history of Buckinghamshire, significant events in Buckinghamshire, significant people in Buckinghamshire, um, and also uh, Paralympic sport, um, which is an add-on in recent years. And I'll come back to that later. Um, I've moved on to this next slide and it is to, um, we call these shelfies. Uh, we love taking photos of the books on our shelves. Most things in our strong rooms are in boxes, but some things are kept out. So on the top here, uh, we've got a shelf of uh, registers of electors. Um, now, if you have voted in Buckinghamshire at any point since 1918 up to this year, uh, your name will be somewhere in our collection because uh, registers of electors are one of the uh, cornerstones of our, our collections. Um, and literally everyone in Buckinghamshire is in there somewhere. Um, and then the shelf below, these are part of the core of our collection. These are our, uh, quarter sessions records. Yes, quarter sessions. So the body that preceded the council, the county council, um, and these made up part of our initial uh, collection. Um, I've got here a little walkthrough. Let's just see if I click on that. Let's hope it works. So blink and you'll miss this. I apologize. So we'll play this through once. So this is a walkthrough Buckinghamshire archives very quickly. <laughs> there we go. So I'll slow it down and try and stop at key points and explain what's going on. So this is our entrance and our inquiry desk. This is where you report when you first come in. Uh, and if instead of turning right, you turn left, you'll see our local studies collections, which is all secondary sources. Again, I'll come back to that in a bit. Um, but if you were visiting us to see some primary sources, some archives, you'd sign in at the reception desk and then you'd turn this way. And then you would be in our search room. And this is where we get the uh, archives out. People usually pre-order them um, and we have them ready, sit down and we start popping them out for you. Um, so this table here to the left is our map table. It uh, can accommodate our sizable maps, both in quantity and in quality, in, in quantity and in scale. Um, but we also have a smaller table on the other side. And obviously this is all pre-pandemic. We've got plastic screens now and we're very limited on the number of people we can have in. Um, but this is where people look at the documents. Um, let's move on. Now, our staff have to sit somewhere. These are our offices. That's uh, it's my desk, looking rather messy. Um, and then here we have the good stuff. This, these are our strong rooms. We have got six strong rooms, seven strong rooms on site. Uh, so the corridor in between, these boxes are all empty, let me reassure you. Um, this strong room we're about to go into is our largest. Uh, come back. Uh, we have got in this room lots and lots of ledgers and private collections, so big estate collections, and collections of small bits and pieces where we get accessions in that are one or two documents. Um, and then for anyone who is uh, a member of BAS, our BAS manorial collection are these wrapped volumes and boxes here on the left. And then through to our smallest strong room at the end. And, and that's kind of the highlights of, of the space down here. So let me just jump back to the presentation. So let's go to the next slide. So. Um, the best way to explain what we do is by introducing you to different members of staff. Um, here on the left, or my left, is um, Sally Mason. Sally is our archivist. She's been here for an awfully long time and she knows everything about the collections, although she will deny it. Um, Sally um, is responsible for uh, collecting. So where people uh, offer us material. We've got a lot of it at the moment, lots of offers because of lockdown, people have been clearing out lofts, clearing out cupboards. Um, those inquiries get directed to Sally. You've got to make your pitch why you think it's important or why you think we should have it. She'll compare the documents against our collecting uh, policy. So before points I mentioned to you earlier, and then she'll arrange for paperwork, arrange for us to go and collect records or for them to be dropped off and then she'll do the initial 
uh, record, which is an accessions record describing that whole little collection. Um, the key things, the key words that Sally is most interested in is provenance. She likes the stories behind the collections because that's part of what the collection is. Um, if someone is giving us a sales catalog for a property from the 1960s, well, it's very interesting as a sales catalog. But if the person depositing us, depositing that sales catalog with us tells us, well, that's a sales catalog that my grandmother kept when she bought her first house in Bletchley, um, suddenly that just gives a richer dimension to that record. Um, so provenance is, is really important and also tied to that is the idea of authenticity. So as an archive, we're a treasure house. Um, we protect the uh, material that comes in and part of that is, is that when we get something out and say it's original, people have to believe that it's original. So the authenticity of something is, is something that Sally's looking at as well. Um, so the next slide, um, this is uh, the new county archivist, Daniel Williams, who has been in post now for about six months. Um, now, Daniel very kindly posed this photo for me, um, but he would be the first to tell you that he doesn't get anywhere close to the archive documents that he's looking at here. Um, he is uh, got his firefighting for the service, leading, trying to uh, argue for new space for us, uh, for one thing. Um, so as much as he would love to spend time looking at documents, he is far too busy leading the service. Um, next up is um, Judy, my colleague. She is sitting in the search room in the invigilator's chair. So part of uh, being an archive, we collect documents, so that's Sally's job, um, and then we make them accessible to people. Um, so people get in touch with us and they say, I want to look at X document or Y document. They come in, um, they book an appointment, we get the documents out for them, they come and visit us, um, but it's not like a library. They can't just sort of pull the document off the shelf. Um, we have a very controlled space. So that search room I showed you earlier in the walkthrough, um, it's invigilated at all times by staff. We don't let people in with bags. Um, we're really concerned about the security. We don't think that people are going to necessarily wander off of our documents, but they might say, accidentally write on them with a pen. So we ban, we, we say no to pens, pencils only. So, and again, that's part of the authenticity and the, the security is just making sure that people are accessing documents, but maybe not altering them. Um, now, hidden under my face um, here in the corner is my colleague, Paul who is uh, working on um, Ancestry that he's accessing through one of the computers here. Um, we provide free access to Ancestry in normal times when we're open uh, properly. Um, he's actually answering an inquiry for someone um, who has contacted us. They might live quite far away. They might be in America, Australia, but they found during their research into their family history that they've got a connection to Buckinghamshire and they're just asking us a more detailed question and we're, we're using the resources that we have and pairing that with Ancestry uh, just to try and answer the question for them. And we get a lot of inquiries like that. So not everyone has to come in. Um, next here is Sam, again, one of our, our long-term, long-serving members of staff. Some would say long-suffering. She is our conservator. So uh, again, in addition to collecting, making accessible, our third major task is caring, is caring for the collections. So uh, while Sam here is, she's performing, I think it's a repair on a bit of parchment. Um, a lot of what she does is actually triaging new material. So when Sally arranges for something to arrive, Sam will always look these items over in case they might have an infestation of, um, silverfish or fuzzy bears, um, or they could be covered in pigeon poo. We've had that relatively recently. Um, they could be damp or full of mold and need cleaning and drying out. Um, we've, she's seen it all over the years. Um, so that's what Sam does. And if you ever have a chance to go into Sam's conservation lab, uh, sometimes on tours, we're able to open it up um, and she can talk you through all the equipment, but she's got such uh, a juxtaposition between very modern equipment like this um, fume cupboard there, uh, but next to it is a Victorian book binding press, uh, which is still used regularly. So it's absolutely fascinating what Sam does and it's absolutely magic. 
Um, so that gives you an idea of the sort of the three core functions and who performs them. Um, so I've got two, and I would admit it, frankly, very dull slides next because there's no pictures on them. But I just wanted to talk you through uh, the primary sources, secondary sources we have here, the types of things we have. Uh, so um, I've touched on some of these primary sources in the archive. So we keep these in the strong rooms. They're unique. If something happened to them, we couldn't replace them. Um, they are unique pieces of evidence. Um, so naturally, local governance and local court records are the core of our collection. Uh, we've also got religious records. Um, so Church of England in particular, uh, but also um, we have some Quaker, some Methodist records. We've even got the odd Catholic record, um, even though they've got a very good, the Catholic Church has a very good network of their own archives. Um, we have so many deeds and estate papers. And in fact, this is probably the main point of synergy between the archives and the Knowing Your Place project is that most of our records are about ownership of land and transfer of land. Uh, our earliest record is about 1100 and it is a very short scrap of a deed because it's a deed from before lawyers were involved. Uh, it's just a few sentences long. Um, and then you get deeds which uh, are um, specialist deed cataloger Martin will describe as a fudder because when you drop it on a desk it makes a very loud fud. There are pages and pages of it. Um, we've also got schools records, um, wonderful um, log books which describe life in Victorian and early 20th century schools are very underutilized and I will uh, sing their praises. Um, we have a lot of historic photographs, uh, but I'll come back to that. Uh, personal and family papers, um, not so much, but these increasingly become increasingly common in our collections moving from the Victorian period onwards. Uh, militia records, so um, we work in partnership with the Bucks Military Museum Trust. A lot of our militia records have originated from their collecting activities. Uh, we make those accessible. Um, we have some business records, not as many as I would like. Um, businesses are inclined to maybe not value their records as much um, or see the historic value in them. Uh, but we do have a few um, uh, hospital and asylum <laughs> records. Again, we have a lot where for some specific institutions and then nothing for many other institutions. Um, maps are a big part of our collection. Um, unique original hand-drawn maps, uh, but also moving through to OS and GOAD maps, um, which I'll touch on later. And Parasport is a huge part of our collection, uh, following a lot of uh, project uh, activity in the run-up to the 2012 Games. Um, of course, there's the, the Stoke Mandeville Paralympic connection, uh, and we work with the National Paralympic Heritage Trust um, to store a lot of their, the records they've been collecting over the years, not just from Buckinghamshire, but internationally, we're becoming a, a home for, for Parasport records, possibly not so relevant to your project. Um, and then secondary sources, these are things which are a bit more open access uh, in our other, other space. Um, you can just often pick these things off the shelf, um, often with staff guidance, because it can be a bit overwhelming, uh, we can direct you to specific things. Um, the chances are, if you've got a question about local history, someone has already had that question and tried to answer it in a different way. Uh, so books and reports about Buckinghamshire, these include archeological reports, people's dissertations and PhDs um, about specific bits of Buckinghamshire history. I found the other day a PhD thesis, or maybe it was just a master's thesis about the lace industry um, from the 1970s. And it was fantastic. Uh, there's me scratching around trying to re reinvent the wheel when a lot of that work was already there. Um, we also have um, council reports. So we've got everything about HS2 that's been published by the council. Um, again, perhaps not so relevant, but it's probably reassuring to know that we do collect contem uh, contemporary works like that. Um, our predecessors uh, several years ago were in the habit of taking uh, cuttings from local newspapers about specific parishes and arranging them in parish by parish files. And these are phenomenal. These are such a good resource. We're really not allowed to do this anymore because of copyright. 
Um, but they are sitting here in about 10 filing cabinets in this room with me and no one ever uses them. Um, and for doing research about a specific parish, I can't think of a finer place to start really. And it's often my own starting point when I'm doing something for social media. Um, so they are on open access, but they're in a room that people think is closed to the public. So it's always worth, if you want to access these, we can't do it at the moment because we're not properly open, but when we are properly open, come in, come to the reception desk, say you want to see the parish cuttings files and we will help you. Um, I've jumped a bullet point. We've got, as I mentioned, free access to ancestry here, um, but also the family history, the Buckinghamshire Family History Society's database, which is uh, a powerful family history tool. Um, we have newspapers, uh, mostly on microfilm. Um, the key titles we have here are the Bucks Free Press and the Bucks Herald. Uh, different libraries around the county have more local press titles. So, for example, for Amersham and Chesham, Chesham Library is, I am informed, the place to go. Uh, and Buckingham Library, again, have microfilm for newspapers of that area. Um, OS and GOAD maps. Um, we have them up until about 2011, and after that, it's digital access only uh, that we can provide. Um, I think we're still collecting GOAD maps. And then directories, um, again, a really, really powerful tool for parish by parish research, particularly Kelly's directories. I know they're available online through the University of Leicester, but I find the interface quite clunky and there's nothing quite like just picking up a Kelly's. So this one is from 1891, it's just of Buckinghamshire and it's broken down parish by parish. And at the start of each parish, there is a, I mean, I could hold this up, but you won't be able to read it. Um, there's just a, a little prose description of the parish. Um, so for Te Western, they say it's a, a parish on the river at Ouse, um, which divides the country from Northamptonshire. It's, it's close to Banbury and, Bre the Banbury and Bletchley branch of the London Northwest Railway. Uh, it goes through to talk about the arrangements of the Church of England locally, um, local um, res uh, who the justice of the peace is, that sort of thing. So. And we have those consistently over a, a period of time. So you can compare an early one to a late one. Um, so they're a really useful resource. And like I say, you can access them online for free via the University of Leicester. Um, but sometimes just picking up a Kelly's is, is so much easier. Um, okay, so always through. Um, I'll be really quick about this. Um, how our resources get used. So if we talk how we use our resources. Um, this is mostly my job. Um, it's my role. I was talking about all my colleagues. I didn't tell you what I do. It's my job to sort of proactively share what we have in our collection and get other people excited about what we have. So I do a lot of social media and a series of podcasts. Um, so on social media, it ranges from the sublime to the ridiculous. We did something about Donald Duck being an Aylesbury duck last week, for an example. Um, in normal times, we do tours, events, and activities. During pandemic times, I do sessions like this. Um, we try to tie in our collections to national campaigns and anniversaries. So we did a World War One project a few years ago. Um, a new thing for us, we're trying to uh, diversify the way people engage with us. So we're trying to use some of our sources to put together creative writing inspiration kits. Um, I've even had my arm twisted into having a creative writing open mic session later in the year. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then we do special projects. So at the moment, we've got something uh, about parasport on the go and also black history, uh, a black history research group, um, just trying to have a look at our holdings and pull out those stories so that we can talk to, uh, the black community, but also everyone in Bucks has got an interest in this. Um, so we're, where we've got these stories, we're trying to find them and tell them. And then how our resources get used by other people. Um, by far and away, the most popular is people coming in, people contacting us about family history and house history. Um, we have contemporary legal and governance functions. So again, registered electors, uh, people with boundary disputes or wanting to do something, get a heritage listing for their house. Um, people trying to access their own personal data, particularly if uh, they have been adopted. 
we have very little that we, we can signpost on. Um, the Windrush compensation scheme is another thing that uh, is um, making us scratch our heads at the moment as well. And we're trying to help people find evidence that they lived in Buckinghamshire who want to apply for those schemes. Um, Desk-based archaeological research is quite a lot of our work, particularly in the run-up to East West Rail and HS2. Um, we license our images for TV and film. Uh, there was a Paralympics documentary that went out last week that uh, we licensed some film for. Um, and we also license images to books, uh, as I mentioned, academic research supporting papers and books. Then we help with uh, support other people's projects. So there's the big rights of way project that's rumbling on and will be until 2028. Um, we help people with that. Bucks Garden Trust, again, they always have several different projects on the go and we try and support them as best we can. Um, and indeed knowing your place, that's something that we will hopefully be able to support if you want to come in and visit us. Uh, FOI requests uh, increasingly, especially while we were closed during lockdown, people were trying to access our information via freedom of information. But these are things that come up uh, where people need the information for a contemporary reason uh, and proof of address. Uh, and that I'm sure there are many other ways that people um, use our information. Those are ones that were just top of my head when I was putting these together. Um, so I'll whiz through this really, really quickly. These are some of my personal favorites. Um, so this is the Triceratops in the snow, Pear, Bridge, Pear Tree Bridge in Milton Keynes. Um, this is to kind of il il illustrate the fact that we look after records for Milton Keynes um, as well as for what we would today consider Buckinghamshire. We also extend to Slough up until the 1970s down south too. Um, the, I don't understand why the concrete cows are better known than the, trunk, the, the Triceratops because I think that the Triceratops would take the concrete cows in a fight, no problem. Um, he is looking a bit different these days because I saw him recently. Um, I think he's camouflage at the moment. They do repaint him every now and then. Um, but yeah, so Triceratops in the snow, by far and away my favourite photo in the whole collection. Um, this photo is of some Paralympic ice hockey and it is to illustrate the point that sometimes, despite best, in, best uh, intentions, information about an image gets separated from, a photo, from the actual image. So I don't know the name of this goalkeeper. Um, but um, this is unfortunately the status of a lot of the photos from our para, para sports collections. Uh, we have lots of wonderful photos, but we don't know where they're of, what the games was, who, who who's featuring in those photos. Um, next up is a book from our bankruptcy collection. Uh, again, this is from the quarter sessions uh, collection. So part of the very core of our um, collection. Um, and I love the irony of this. This was, um, so when someone was declared bankrupt in the, I think this is 1870s, uh, their papers would be confiscated and form part of their file uh, that the quarter sessions kept. I think that's how it worked. Um, and this uh, book that they used to keep some records of their financial dealings, this particular person, was also their mathematics exercise book. Um, I can't, maths is not my strong point so I can't check how good they were at maths but it certainly looks very neat and tidy but clearly um, not enough to keep them from bankruptcy. Um, this photo is a new photo that came in during lockdown and it's a postcard showing uh, Wadston Cricket Ground and Pavilion and we hadn't had an image of this before in our collections we didn't know what this looked like so um, this is trying to get across the idea that we're constantly filling in gaps of knowledge. And actually, a lot of the time when people ask us questions, we have to say, I don't know. We don't have that information, but try looking elsewhere. Um, so it's nice to sort of, as, as more and more comes in, to be filling in those gaps. Um, now, under the row of faces is a leaflet for a product called Plamil, which uh, I was really excited to find out was the first soya milk made industrially in the UK. So Buckinghamshire is a home of soya milk um, down in, uh, I think these were, this was uh, based, they were based on a farm in uh, Langley. So a nice new, uh, uh, another nice recent find. And then this here is an old favorite. It's a um, recipe for whiskey. 
uh, from the 1700s, which looks far more complicated than I understand the process of whiskey making to be. Um, now, um, I've also got a few things out to show you, but I might save that to the end because I want to show you our uh, website. So access. So um, a lot of the time, if you've got a question that you think we might be able to help with, I would always say, just drop us an email. Um, sometimes talking to, uh, starting a, a correspondence with, uh, with us archivists uh, is the best way of going about it. We might be slow in replying. We have many, many emails every day, um, but we always try to get back to you within 10 working days. And that's the best place to start. Um, now, let's see if this works. No, that's not going to work. So here's one I prepared earlier. That's smaller. We go. So this is our website. Um, this is a rather confusing array of uh, resources and um, ways of accessing our, our information. We've got details of how to visit us, um, details of our local history collections, so secondary sources like I was explaining to you, um, ways of using our archives for research, a list of our charges, because unfortunately we have to charge for some of our services, um, archive resources for schools, don't look at that, it's very old and embarrassing. Um, our catalogue, I'll come back to that in a minute. Our historic photographs, now. This is actually, I was told the other day, the oldest part of the council's website. So um, in itself, using this in itself is a, um, a bit of history. Um, we arranged uh, a lot of our historic photos to, for them to be scanned many years ago. Not all of them, but some of them. And then we arranged them by parish. Um, so let's go for one of the small, let's go for Barton Harpshaw. So it's a good way you can just choose a parish and see what photos we have. Now, Barton is a small place, so there's only a few photos. Um, but you can call up the photo. So these are the medieval bells. We've got a little bit of description there and a reference number. Um, and we have that for literally every parish, there'll be something. Um, there's also a way of an advanced search, so you can search for, I don't know, cow, uh, so you search across the parishes. It's a very clunky, low-tech uh, way of searching our photos, but it is quite satisfying. It comes with a, a health warning, you can down download those little um, JPEGs, but um, we cannot guarantee copyright clearance on them. Um, if you did want to uh, use those, drop us a line, we can do the copyright check for you and tell you how much it will cost you to actually give you a scan. Um, so the other way of looking, searching our archive collection, so these are the primary sources, is our shiny new catalogue. And there are several ways of using it. So you can do a keyword Google style search. Uh, so if we put in Barton Harshaw, just do that. You'll see that 179 records come up. So some of these will be whole collections. So Barton Harshaw and Parish registers. Um, and some of these will be individual items. So we've got here overseers of the poor, bastardry, and this will tell you, break it down to individual items. And then you can search. And if you find something that you want either a scan of or want to come in and look at, you can either drop us an email via the um, email address, um, listing the reference number, this number here, or you can, in these, this action section, you can just hit a button and that will automatically email us um, with the reference number and the details. Um, there are very sophisticated ways to create um, lists of documents that you want to see here. Um, again, under the actions. So let's have a look at the registers. So you can add to, again, the faces are kind of in the way, sorry guys, but there is a button here. You can add to um, save documents and you can uh, come back and the 
the cookies, if you're using Chrome, should mean that those, uh, those favorites should still be saved. So you don't have to do everything at once. Um, I will warn you that archive cataloging is a dark art. Um, we're very precious about it as archivists, but it doesn't make sense to very many people. And sometimes that means archive catalogs can be very confusing. Because we're interested in preserving things like the provenance of um, a collection, it means that things are, are kind of uh, catalogued like trees um, with a description that doesn't mean anything at the top. So button, parish records. That's a description for hundreds of records, whereas this down here is the actual record for something individual. So there's a lot of browsing through to find what you're after. And that's why sometimes contacting us to corroborate that you found everything or just ask us to do a search for you, we're, we're happy to do that. Okay, so um, there are other ways to interrogate our catalog. So we can browse the collections and here, this is a new catalog we've only just started but we've pulled out some of the the, fun, the the types of record we have and then you can browse those records so for example charities records this will give you the the chapter headings all the different entities that we have records for so starting with Aylesbury Grammar School, Pepper's Charity Aylesbury um, so that's quite a nice way of browsing uh, and then we also have a lovely way a lovely feature called Featured Collections. We've only got two here at the moment, as a Triceratops again. Um, but this is, enables us to sort of kind of almost put together an exhibition. Uh, so click on that, uh, gives you some summary and some context and the structure of that collection as well. Um, so they're just different routes to finding records. And this is something we're looking to expand on. So. I've been waffling on for 43 minutes. Um, what would people like to do? Um, I can either show you some of the extra things I got out or I can um, definitely stop sharing my screen. No, 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 stop share. There we go. Or I can just take questions. It's up to you really. Thank you, Catherine. Just unmuting. What I'll do, um, if people want to ask questions, I can stop recording and then in case people don't want them to be on. But I, I'm going to, I can share this, this, this overview with everyone afterwards. So I'll just 